Hi there. Welcome to this build of a 48 inch wingspan Tomboy Senior. Now the Tomboy Senior is a David Boddington adaptation of a 1950s plane by Vic Smead which was just called the Tomboy and had a smaller wingspan. So what Dave Boddington did is essentially he enlarged it. It's a very similar plane but just a bigger version. Well in the previous videos we got these lovely wings with this huge dihedral finished and that's all done now and ready to cover, cover bar a little bit of sanding. And the reason it's got this huge dihedral is because this Tomboy Senior is only two channels, elevator, rudder. There's no ailerons, so by having a good big dihedral, it gives us a lot more stability in flight. Now, in this video, we're going to be building the main part of, or starting to build the main part of the fuselage. And the first job we've got to do is stick up these sides, which have got some lovely curves, and what I'm going to do to get those curves is I'm going to laminate them. Now, I think in this video I'm just going to get the fuselage sides constructed and then in the subsequent video or the next video I'm going to actually be joining them together with these cross formers. But I think it's going to be a several stage process to create the sides. I'm going to build one on top of the other. So that's two stages in itself. I'm not sure how that will go, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my building board now and I've got a set of plans here, or part of a plan here, which I'm going to build the fuselage sides on. So I'll set that up now and we'll have a closer look at that. Right, well I've now set this up. I've got my balsa building board, which is lovely and flat, and I've checked it's flat on my bench uh, so I can pin into that. I put the paper plans which show the sides of the fuselage that we need to create, put those on the plans, held on with the blocks, and I've covered that in plastic so I don't end up sticking my balsa to the plans. A little bit of glare on there which isn't ideal, but hopefully that doesn't show too much on the camera. Now I'm going to be making two sides, identical sides, and I'm going to be building on top of the plan. And I'm going to do the first, or, or one side first, and then I'm going to take it off, sand it, and then I'll build another one on top of that. Now, this is constructed all of quarter inch balsa. But because we have some lovely curves here, and a little bit of a curve here, I'm actually going to be laminating them from one eighth by a quarter balsa. And I've stripped myself a load of that down and I'm going to be gluing it with PVA and then with the lamination that should hold those curves a lot better. And I'm going to be using these big T-pins and maybe some of the small ones if I run out to actually pin this into position. But rather than, I'm not going to pin through the balsa and rather than just putting the pin against the balsa like that which I think when we start putting these curves in could leave dents in the balsa which will might be a little bit unsightly in the finished model. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use little bits of scrap balsa. I've raided my um, scrap balsa box and all these tiny little pieces that you think would never come in for anything are now going to come into their own and so what I will be doing is I will be pinning little bits of balsa like that. Hopefully this won't split it. Pin through and then we can push the balsa up against that like that. So I want another one there. Like that. And by doing this we can create the curve and as I said, hopefully we won't get any damage marks from where the pins have been. So that obviously needs another one there, which could go at a bit of an angle like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid putting these blocks 
where the struts are going to go because once I've got this pinned out and the top one pinned out I will do these uh, vertical pieces which again is, is a quarter inch square and uh, I've got some of that here as well which I'll cut to size. Now once I've got this pinned out like this there are certain areas I think like I don't know where that shows up on the camera where these aren't held together very tightly and the last thing we want is a bit of a gap between these because they won't glue properly so I've got these small clamps these I got they're about a pound or one pound fifty from uh, Wilco in the UK and if I'm very careful with those I can use those just to make sure that that is held together and I don't know whether I said I'm going to be using PVA and a brush to uh, to glue these uh, these longer ones together. As you saw, I PVA these laminated curved pieces, but the cross pieces, I started with this one, I think it was, and I started using PVA. And after I'd done that, I thought I will use CA. So the rest of these have just been CA'd. I pinched them together and uh, just CA'd them. Now, I'm gonna leave this until tomorrow when the, uh, the PVA will have dried and uh, I can then think about sanding this up, trimming off some of the excess and, uh, and then we need to create the second side and we'll use this as a template to build on top of. Obviously we'll need to put some plastic on that. Right well this now has been drying for or oh, it must be at least 16 hours so this PVA should be well dried. And as you remember, I did most of these, all except for that one, I think, oops, with um, uh, CA. So there's no problem there. So I'm going to take this off the plan now and see what, uh, what it looks like, the moment of truth. Now, you can see here that it says uh, one eighth sheet for a, a little bit of a curve here, strengthener, but also to create the window. There's a, a piece of sheeting that will go in there and if we look down here there's a piece of sheeting that will go in there so I think I will probably put those bits of sheeting in as soon as I've got this off the board and uh, and then I will sand it all together and that will be before I make the second uh, piece right well there we go that seems to be quite uh, quite nice. These curves 
seem to have stayed in okay and uh, just try that for movement it seems quite it seems quite a solid construction so what I'm going to do now is as I said I'm going to get this piece in here and this window piece in there because it will add a, a great deal of strength and this little bit of sheeting now anything that goes down the tail I'm using really really light balsa because I th these are as I've said earlier t a little bit tail heavy and um, I don't want to add weight if I can help it I'm going to leave these extensions here which will need trimming at some point but they're good pin down points for when I come to do the second um, the second side which I'm going to build on top well that's the plan anyway so I'll get those pieces in now these strengtheners and then what I'm going to do is where's my sanding stick and then I will give this a good sand Right, well this side now is finished. This is going to be the interior face and this will be the exterior face. And the exterior face was uh, <clears throat> a lot smoother. It was uh, face down when we built it. So it took um, not quite as much sanding. But to be honest, both sides now are lovely. But we need to decide which side of the fuselage is it's going. And this is going to be the right side because these panels here are flush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the building board back. I'm going to set this on the building board and then we can build the second um, fuselage side on top of this one. And uh, hopefully that will be a fairly easy process. So I'll get that set up now. Right, well I've got the right hand side pin down onto my balsa board now and I put the plastic on top of that so that the new side that we build the left hand side when we glue it we don't glue it to the right hand side so hopefully uh, the plastic will protect us from doing that now I've been through my scrap box again and picked out some bits of balsa now I was using quarter inch square when I built the first side just to hold those sides in place and to stop them getting marked but now these aren't really big enough and I've got some I think this is uh, 3 8 10 mil balsa and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to pin that I'm going to go around the edge and I'm going to pin that into place like that and another piece and I'm going to go all along these outside edges and then when I come to laminate the side pieces hopefully the glare isn't too bad on this I apologize if it is it's, it's difficult to get it so it's not but I'm going to have all these blocks on the outside let's put another one just here there we go right so we've got those blocks I will PVA these again as before and then these blocks can be used to guide the location of the spars so they are directly on top of the spars below. Now I've obviously got to put some balsa on this side and the plastic is going to cause me a problem there because it doesn't want to go down so I'm just going to put a couple of nicks in the plastic like that and probably one across so it frees up that bit of plastic to allow that block to come in on that side
I'm really pleased with the way that's gone and uh, it seems to be lovely and in line with the bottom one so hopefully we should get two more or less identical sides and hopefully it hasn't stuck together because of the plastic and I found by cutting the plastic like that and then just folding it up like that over the side these blocks went on quite nice without um, hopefully sticking to these frames so that worked out really good uh, there's uh, there was a little bit of opening of the um, of the lamination and uh, but that was soon brought into check with these clamps so it's just on some of the curves and that actually it's more on the straight bit looking at this the curves seem to hold quite tight so anyway I'm going to leave this now until tomorrow so a good 16, 17, 18 hours something like that and then we'll take this off fill in these, um, these pieces here so this piece of timber and the bit for the window and we've got a piece to go in the back there and then I'll give them a good sand and we'll come back and we'll have a look at what these fuselage sides are like I now have my two completed identical sides or at least they're identical regarding the, the size and the shape they are slightly different in so much that there's a right and a left because the sheeting here is flush with the outside edge rather than the inside edge uh, I've given them a really good sand particularly concentrating on that outside edge so it looks lovely and smooth when we get the covering on and I'll tell you what it feels really good to get these built because they're, they they're, they're a great shape, they're quite solid and yet there's no weight to them as you'd expect with this type, of, uh, this type of construction. I've left these pieces here on the front a little bit longer than needed and I will trim those once I've got the firewall on and finish the structure around the top here for the, uh, for the wings. Well it's definitely time to draw this video to a close now and I've really enjoyed making these fuselage sides. It's been a while since I've, I've done st structures like this and it's really, really rewarding. And I hope you found it interesting and useful. Now in the next video, we're going to be actually joining these fuselage sides together with the cross formers and braces and it's really going to start to take shape from then on. So I hope you'll come back and join me and see how we get on in doing that. Thanks for watching.